Hello and welcome back to the channel. Before we get into this, I wanted to apologize because I missed the last two uploads. I got my wisdom teeth out, so I haven't been able to talk properly or eat properly, so I haven't had a lot of energy and I haven't been able to talk to these videos. But I'm starting to feel a lot better. I can talk again. My jaw doesn't hurt as bad, so we're good to go. I'm going to start making videos again. We'll be right back on schedule. And just real quick, I wanted to extend a huge thank you to all of you for helping this channel to reach 173 subscribers. That is a crazy feeling for me. I remember just like a couple of months ago, being super excited that I was about to hit 50. Now I've hit 50, super excited, super jazzed that I was able to do that. Hit 100, 150, now we're at 173, and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for making that happen. We're almost to 200, so if you could hit that subscribe button and make sure that you're not missing any good DaVinci Resolve content, content on how to use your camera, YouTube tips and tricks, video editing tips and tricks in general, just, you know what, if you're trying to get better in that space or any space having to do with video where you're going to be using your camera, DaVinci Resolve, any of this stuff, Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of it because it would mean a lot to me and it would help you out in the long run to gain more knowledge. So if you haven't seen the first two videos in this series, I would highly recommend that you go check them out because learning VFX and compositing and keyframing and all this other stuff that sounds all complex but is about to make a lot of sense to you isn't necessarily a necessity over editing, using transitions, using audio, things like that, making your videos into videos. This is like the frosting on the cake. You can still have a good cake with no frosting, but the frosting is going to be that thing that maybe, maybe puts it to a new level, right? So learn how to make your cake. Go check out those first two videos. They're in the description down below. If you don't care about that and you just want to be the best froster in the world and you're looking to get started, Go ahead and watch this video right now. You don't need to worry about those, but if you're looking to be able to do all of it, go check out those videos. Link in the description down below. Without any further ado, let's hop into this. I forgot. Real quick, before we hop into this, I'll be answering any and all questions you guys have for me, so if you have any at any point throughout the video, ask me in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you, like, super quick. I normally have my phone on me, I will be able to answer your question, like, right away. Also, if you have any criticism of the video, you're like, hey, uh, I don't like the way you did this, could you do it this way, It'd make it easier for me to watch, easier for me to see, so that I can make these videos better for you, easier for you to follow, things like that. Just, you know, whatever. Let's let's talk in the comments, all right? Let's, all right. Okay, back into the video. All right, so that intro that you just saw is my normal intro, but it had a little bit of an extra thing in it. I don't know if you noticed the dragon that came down and landed, but there was a dragon in the intro this time. So that is an example of compositing. Compositing is one of the most basic forms of VFX that you can utilize in your videos and it is one of the most effective as well. So when you're using green screens, that's compositing. When you're adding in different elements like things that pop up on the screen like lower thirds, that's compositing. There's a ton of examples of compositing and the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I added that dragon and then I'm going to show you how to make a lower thirds. All of this is going to be within Fusion. So I'm going to go ahead and import a clip. I'm going to use this clip right here, and then I'm going to go find that clip of the dragon and show you how to insert it into your videos. All right, so I just found the dragon clip. You can see it up here. We're good to go. I'm going to drag this into our timeline. And then we are going to turn this dragon into a Fusion clip. So you right click on it, go up to New Fusion Clip, go ahead and click on it and then we're going to shorten it down a bit we're going to cut the front off you'll remember this from earlier episodes how to cut how to move things around in your timeline and we're going to get to the point where it lands right there and that's when we're going to end it because we don't need this to be super long and the longer your vfx clips are the more work it's going to be for your computer to render them. So if we keep them short like this, it's going to make it a lot easier on our computer. So it's not going to get laggy thing. It's not going to get laggy and our actual final render time for the video is going to be shorter. So we're going to go ahead and click on our fusion clip that we just made. 
We're going to go into the Fusion tab here at the bottom. And then we're going to be greeted with this screen, which is going to show us our last clip here. But that's not the one we want. So we're going to go up to the top left here where it says Clips. We're going to go ahead and click on Clips. And then we're going to select our Fusion clip right here. And then what you'll see here on the screen are called nodes. So we have a media out node and a media in node. And bonus points for you guys who guessed already that the media in node is our fusion clip. Everything that we put in between these is going to be a node. So we have masking nodes where you can make a mask right here like this. We have background nodes where you can put in solid colors things like that. We've got painting nodes, all sorts of different kinds of nodes. But for this right here, what we're going to be doing is creating a green screen key. And what you want to do for a green screen key is you're going to go ahead and hit shift spacebar to pull up your select tool menu. We're going to go ahead and type in delta keyer. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to add a delta keyer node right into our node web down here. So if we click on the back half of this arrow that goes from media in to media out where it turns blue here, just click it, it will go away. So now we're going to take the out, which is this little gray box from our media in. We're going to go ahead and drag that into our delta keyer and then from our delta keyer back into our media out. A little bit faster way to do this is if you have these two connected like this and then you have your delta key or just free floating you can hold shift drag it onto this line and it will put it right in between them just like that so now they're connected but they're passing through this delta key or node so anything we do to this delta key or node will happen to the media in before it gets to the media out so the media out will reflect all of the changes that happen in this line so we're going to go ahead and select our background color here the color that we want taken away. I'm going to go ahead and drag that eyedropper onto the green here and as you can see all the green just disappeared. So if we undo that you can see all this green right here on our screen but when we bring our background color and select that it's going to go away. If we hit play now you can see this dragon coming through. It's flying in. It's a little bit slow because your computer's rendering it. Real time will be a little bit faster. But that's that. So you can see we have this white fringe around them right there. Pop into our mat tools here. We're going to bring up our threshold just ever so slightly. And then we're going to erode it. Just, guys, such a tiny bit. No, we can't even, we can't even erode it. So we're going to bring our threshold. We're going to, we're going to bring it so that it closes down on that white space on the edges there. We're going to make sure our dragon is still there. Okay, so now let's check it out. Let's hit play. And you'll notice that the white edges are primarily gone. They're still there, and we'll be able to tweak those out later on. But for now, that looks pretty good. So now that we've got our key done inside of Fusion, we'll pop back into the edit page. And you'll see that underneath our Fusion composition here, we have our basic footage that we're going to be using. So we're going to go ahead, hit play on that and you'll see that it kind of this red bar turns blue and that means that it's rendering so once this red bar is completely blue this should play back smoothly with no delay so we're gonna wait for that to happen and then we're gonna hit play and it's gonna play back and you guys will see what we just accomplished with that green screen I just got this clip from the internet it's nothing too special I just put in dragon on a green screen and I got this clip so if you need things like that to composite into your footage it's actually quite easy to do you just have to do a little bit of googling a little bit of downloading some clips and you're good to go so let's watch this back so there we have our dragon you can see that the sound kept going afterward we'll delete that because we just want it flying in and then the moment it hits the ground it's going to go away. But since we've already done this, we can extend this clip out and it will stay green screened because we did the whole clip inside of Fusion. But we're going to get rid of that for now and we're going to get on to masking. 
So masking, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this clip by holding alt and dragging it down. And we're going to take only this much of it. We're going to shorten it down again so that we don't have to wait so long. And I'm going to take this top clip here, pop into fusion. Ooh, we got to turn this into a fusion clip. We're going to turn this, go into fusion. We're going to select our fusion clip. And then we're going to put a mask in this node line here, this node web. So when we add a mask, we're going to do it onto a node directly. We're not going to go within the line like we did last time. We're going to go directly onto something. So in this case, we're going to do our media in. We're going to hit mask. And then we're going to just trim this up. There are plenty of different mask shapes, but they all work generally the same. They're going to make it so that the only thing you can see is that mask. So now that we've got that mask on there and it's the correct size to hold our whole guy there, we're going to go ahead and put in a transform node. Transform node, oh, we don't want it attached there, so we're going to get rid of this line, get rid of this line, reattach our mask to our node with the output, and then we're going to put our transform right in this line here. So now, if we take our transform, we can move this around wherever we want, and since it is after our mask and our media in, it will move both of those things together. So we're going to put this one over here. Then we're going to go ahead and copy paste these in. And we're going to pop these after that transform. And then we're going to make a new transform node and put it between our media in the second one here, the copied one, and this merge because this merge is where everything comes together so if we put it after the merge it's going to be moving both of them together so we're gonna go ahead and take this transform number two and we're gonna move this one over here to the right now you can see that we have one and two of these so if we go back to our edit page you'll see that we have three of our skaters and that is a fantastic way to do some little effects in there it's gonna have the same deal you can feather these edges on that mask so that it doesn't look so harsh. So if we go up to our mask here and we choose soft edge, we slide that up. It's gonna just merge everything right together, right into our clip. So we're gonna go back to edit and then you can see those hard edges are gone. It's just him and two ghosts of him chilling out, riding a longboard. Pretty cool stuff if you ask me. So that's masking, that's how you do masking. If you don't want something in your clip, you'd use masking to get rid of it. Like say if I didn't want my mic, I don't even know if you can see this honestly, but if I didn't want my microphone here, I could take a video or a picture of my desk without the microphone there, and then I could do our actual video like this where I have the microphone so that you guys can hear me, and then I would just mask around that microphone and make sure that I never put my hands into this space because then my hands would be masked out, but we just mask around that microphone and then it will show up like there's no microphone there because the microphone is masked out and the behind footage is showing through, which is a pretty cool thing to be able to do. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to make some uh, lower thirds call outs. We're just gonna do a super basic one so that this video doesn't take too long but you're gonna be good to go with it. Like it's basic, but you'll be able to use it and it will be effective. So make sure you're following along. So what we're gonna do for this is go ahead and go open up our effects library in the top left here. We're gonna bring in a, whoop, where is it? Here we go, yep. So we're gonna go ahead and go into generators. We're gonna go ahead and go into effects we're going to bring out a fusion composition and the whole thing about this fusion composition is that it's going to be blank completely so we're going to go into fusion grab our fusion composition we're going to pop a background in there and we're going to change this alpha all the way to zero this is our media out up here that's all you get with a because there's nothing going into it so our new media in is going to be this alpha background that you can see through and then we're going to go ahead and make another background. We're going to drop that in this line here. It's going to merge them together. This background, we're going to put a rectangular mask on. We're going to grab this corner so that we can change the size of it. We're going to make it longer and taller. Then we're going to go ahead and move it down to this corner for the beginning. So we're going to get into keyframing a little bit again here. Keyframing is really easy to do. Just practice and you'll get the hang of it. No sweat. 
So what we want to do is again make a center keyframe. Since we're at the first frame, we don't want it showing up yet. So we're going to drag it down off of our composition. And then we're going to move ahead like probably 10 frames. We're going to bring it back up onto our composition so that you will be able to see it in the frame. And then we're going to come down here. We're going to make a text node. Text is right here. We're going to go ahead and drag this in. It's going to make a new merge. Our text is going to be down here attached to the new merge. We're going to write something like lower thirds. And then we're going to drag our lower thirds text right down here. We're going to zoom out on this window up here by holding control and scrolling out. And we're going to go back to our first so that we can see where our original background is hanging out right there. And then we're going to bring our text down to about, yeah, that looks good. So then we're going to keyframe where our text is by going into our layout right here with this little plus. And then we're going to go ahead and click the keyframe marker next to our center. We're going to move forward 10 spaces and drag that up onto our lower thirds callout. And then we're going to go to, we'll say 30, make another keyframe for both of them. Boop. And then we'll go to 35 and have them both slide back down. The reason we made that third keyframe in there at around 30 is so that it doesn't slowly move to where it's going throughout the entire duration of the keyframe timeline so that it doesn't slowly move throughout the duration of the keyframe timeline because it's gonna think okay by this point I need to get to here so if you say by this point you need to be at the same point it's not gonna move at all until it hits that point and needs to move somewhere else it's pretty convenient it's easy to do, but it's also very easy to forget. So try to remember to do that if you don't want something moving. Keyframe it later on at the same spot. So if we watch this back, we're going to see all of our keyframes in action. Boop, they're going to pop up together. They're going to go away together. And since it's on an alpha, that's going to be right on top of our footage. Oop, we got that red bar. It's not showing up properly. Boop, and then it slides back down just like that. So you can make that as long or as short as you want. You can do whatever shapes you want. And that's how you make a basic lower thirds animation. It's easier than you might think. And honestly, if you wanted to use a photo that you made like in Photoshop or something like that, so it looks a little bit more professional than just that rectangle, you can also do that within DaVinci. But if you're like more comfortable in Photoshop or if you want to find something from the internet, you can use your media in so you can start with a photo and do that same thing super convenient super easy and it looks great so now you have all of your fusion elements put together but you're like you know what this dragon that I put in earlier doesn't really look like it matches this scene so if you want to learn a little bit more about coloring and how to match the dragon to the scene or anything else that you're compositing so that they look like they're in the same spot at the same time check out this video right up here it's going to show you how to do coloring in DaVinci Resolve. That will be out soon, if it's not already. So make sure you're subscribed, again, so that you don't miss any of this information coming your way. And I'll see you in the next video.